Hi, this is Gary from Ether Security Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up kernel debugging. Generally, when you are debugging a user space application, it's not too difficult. You just start the application with a debugger, or you attach the debugger to the application while it's running, and then you can debug it. However, with the kernel, it's not so easy because the kernel needs to be running all the time. When it stops, your machine freezes. Because of that, it's not as trivial to debug as a user space program. However, nowadays it's still pretty convenient because of virtual machines. In the past, there were some weird solutions to, to do kernel debugging on the same machine, but with the wide acceptance of virtual machines, of course, you can do kernel debugging using a virtual machine. Basically, what you need to set up is the target machine that you want to debug, which we are going to call the debuggy. And to that, you can connect from somewhere else either from the host computer or from another virtual machine, and we're going to call this the debugger. There are two ways to set up a kernel debugger, and to be specific, we're talking about Windows kernel debugging. In the past, you could use the serial port, so you had to add a serial device to the virtual machine and make your debugger and debuggy communicate through the virtual serial port. Nowadays, you can do that through the network as well. So that's what we are going to try out. It's pretty well documented, so there's no rocket science behind it, but I think it's a really cool thing to, to do. First of all, you have to download the debugging tools for Windows. You can just come here and um, download the Windows 10 SDK. Obviously, you need to choose the SDK for the Windows operating system that you're using. Since I use Windows 10, I download the Windows 10 SDK, which I've done already. So. After the installation, you find the tools under C, Program Files, x86, Windows Kits, and since it's a Windows 10, it's under Folder 10, then Debuggers, and then x64, because I'm using two 64-bit machines. First, we need to configure the target machine to be able to be debugged. To do that, I need the ktnet.exe and the verified nicklist.xml. I will just uh, select these two files and copy them. Then I go to my virtual machine. I create a folder under C called KDNet and paste the files in it. I start the cmd.exe as an administrator, then go to KDNet. What we want to figure out is which interface is the correct one between the debuggy and the debugger. I run ipconfig. Yeah, I need to enable the interface before doing that. So let's do ipconfig again. I have uh, 192, 168, 6.128. This is a virtual network. And now we can go back to the real machine. I will start CMD here as well. We just need to figure out what is the IP address of this machine on the network where the target machine is. It's the same, but it ends with one. So we need this because we need to specify the debugger machine to allow it to connect to the debuggy. Now let's go back to the debuggy and I will just say KDNet and after that the IP address of the debugger which was 6.1 at the end. And then we need to specify the port number, which must be above 50,000. So I will use 51111. All right. It tells us very conveniently where the debugger is enabled and the exact comment how to start the WinDBG on the debugger machine. So I will just copy this line and go back to the other machine and paste it here. I need to navigate to I need to navigate to where the windbg.exe is, which is under the program files x86 Windows Kits 10 debuggers x64. I paste that command here and run it. And it opens up a windbg window and it says waiting to reconnect. At this point we have to restart the virtual machine. At some point while it's restarting, the debugger will be able to connect to it. 
All right, so the connection is now going through. The machine is starting, as you can see. The target machine is booted up. We can log in if we want to. And it's running fine. It gets somewhat slower with the debugger, but it's okay. What I found confusing at the beginning, but it actually totally makes sense, is that it says debugging is not connected and there's no console whatsoever where you could, you know, issue comments. The reason for that is because if you do a break on the debugging machine, then it just stops working. So as long as it runs, you cannot manipulate it because the kernel has to run. So right now everything is fine. We are connected to the target machine. And if we want to do something, we want to go to debug and say break. Now we get our comment prompt. KD, of course, stands for kernel debugger. Now we can manipulate the kernel of the target machine. And if we go back to the virtual machine, it's absolutely frozen. So it doesn't do anything because, of course, the kernel is held up. In the debugger, we could do something like, you know, list modules. And then, you know, you could do your debugging magic in the kernel. So this is it. I'm not going to go into debugging the kernel. I will maybe do a video about it later on. So let me know in the comments if that would be interesting for you. All right, just to summarize, we set up the kernel debugger in this video. We use the network option where the debugger connects to the debuggy through the network. We use the virtual machine, of course. The only thing we had to install was the Windows SDK on the debugger machine and copy two files to the debuggy. And with those, we could set up the debugging session. Oh, and before I forget, I wanted to mention that we use the automatic way to set this up now. There's a menu way as well to do this whole configuration in much more details. I think the only significant difference is that we can actually set up a boot menu where you could choose whether you want to start the machine uh, with or without a debugger. Because the debugger slows down the machine and it could be a security risk as well. Uh, so it makes sense to only use the debugger on the target machine when you actually want to use it. And in all other times, you don't start the debugger with the machine. So it would make sense to set up this boot menu if that's something you would use regularly. But that's going to be a homework for you. Of course, if you subscribe and like this channel, it's highly appreciated. So. Thanks for watching and happy hacking.